Every semester, students spend hundreds of dollars on textbooks. We walk into the bookstore on campus and purchase the books that are required by our professors. For graduation, we have spent thousands on textbooks without having asked any questions. Well, I have some questions. And when I asked them, I didn't do it by the book. $110. I think it was anywhere from like $300 to $400. I spent around four dollars or $500. About $500. It was about $500. I think I spent between $600 and $700. Too expensive. I didn't know they were that expensive. I mean, obviously, I've seen the prices go up, um, but they've always, comparatively, you know, at any given point in time, have always seemed expensive. My name is Pookie Sauter, and I'm in the marketing department, and this is my 22nd year teaching here at NMSU. Say, so, okay, what goes into affecting the price of a textbook? And we start with basic things like costs. And we say, okay, I can tell you how to reduce the costs. I get rid of all the color pictures. I make this print real small so I can get more content into fewer pages. It's all black and white, narrow margins. I said, how many of you are going to read something that looks like that? And they're like, nobody. So, you know, then there's an understanding. That's why there's color photos and there's supplements and there's things like that. And that increases the cost. Yeah, I'm teaching those classes that um, students have to take. They don't necessarily want to take. My name's Blaze Drexler. I teach English, lower level English classes. Um, you know, I, I, I definitely empathize with the students. And although I, I'm not in a position right now to really change anything, I think a lot of, um, you know, a lot of adjunct instructors are, are kind of frustrated and would like to see a change and would like to see more control. Students come in, of course, we're the retail. We're the buyback and the sell. So um, they don't understand that the teachers choose. We have to have what's on hand for the teachers. This, the exact same book, um, and where we order it from sets the prices. Only the people who need the textbooks are only the people going to universities, colleges, community colleges. There's supply and demand is what it comes down to. You know, I mean, uh, there's it's a certain captive audience who need these, so therefore that drives the prices up from the publishing company. Now, if they were selling them to anyone and everyone, the prices wouldn't be nearly as high. I feel like especially when I was a freshman, sophomore, I bought so many books I didn't need and I didn't have anyone to tell me like, oh no, you know, you don't need that book and it definitely feels like a money making thing but it's, it's definitely frustrating because we're all broke as it is. Um, for my math class I use it every day but for my other classes I use it probably 10% of the time, not very much. They could have been used more so since I spent the money on them but I was just kind of just like, wow, like I spent all this money and we hardly ever use them but... You know, I guess it's just another part of college, unfortunately. I've heard awful rumors that students actually take classes and never buy the required textbook. Can you believe that? And of course everybody's like, well, you know, yeah, gosh, never heard of that. I think one of my classes actually utilizes the book pretty frequently, but the rest don't at all. Like my sociology class, it'd be, it's pretty important. Um, but I don't know, I don't think it's too bad if you don't utilize textbooks during class. Well, um, most students, I think, don't use them as much as I would like. I have a quiz for a class later today, and I really, I'd be surprised if half the class had read the material. I think I only really use my book in, like, one of my classes, my music class, and uh, that's because I have to, it's more of a workbook, and I have to tear pages out and turn them in for homework, but that's the most usage I get. Uh, I actually had one class last semester, uh, three books were required and I only needed one. The other two were never even used for, for lecture or for exams. Books are there for the students to use it when they want, you know, it's, it's not, uh, it, it's kind of a choice on the student's part if they're going to read it and utilize that information or not. In my department, we have sole discretion on what book we select for our class. Sometimes people do it departmentally. You know, a committee of faculty members get together and collectively decide what's the one we're going to use for principles of marketing. But we don't do that in my department. I, I think any, if you're going to trust uh, someone to teach the class, I think you should trust them to pick out the material that they're going to teach. Um, so, 
I, it goes it, it goes back to you know just how invested are you and how much do you care about what you're teaching and um, you know I, I think anybody that really does care about what they're teaching would want to use their own resources. The adjuncts, in my experience, we do bring them on to have a heavier teaching instructional load because they're not they don't have the research obligations. They are expected to do more teaching typically than the tenured faculty. So in that sense, you know, they might be even more important in textbook decisions because they're teaching more students. Unfortunately, I'm not in a position right now to, to have much impact on the books that are the core texts of the course. Uh, that's kind of dictated from uh, higher up. That's more of a tenure track kind of decision. Well, um, I can't say I've ever bought all the books, um, but if, say, last semester, if I were to buy all my books, it would be um, close to a, a grand on books. School's already expensive, and I don't understand how I'm supposed to pay for my books every semester. It's really hard. If you really want the book or you really want the information, you're going to find it. Um, I think that people have always figured out ways to get around things and always will. Books have just gotten so expensive. I've heard of students going to Mexico and copying their whole entire book because it's legal there and that's plagiarism here. What am I doing instead of, going, instead of buying books? Well, um, I, what I've done is I've started a, um, an NMSU bookstore account, which they allow you to charge some, uh, some of the books on your account. And uh, I'll buy however many books I can, which isn't even close to half my books on that account. Um, and then I'll take them down to the library. They have a special machine where you can scan your books um, onto a key drive. And I'll you know, spend a couple hours and scan all the books. Maybe I'll have my syllabus so I know what chapters exactly I'll need for the class. And um, I'll scan them on the hard drive or on the key drive, and then I'll return the books and get the new books. And I'll do that until all my books are, are uh, on a key drive. I can understand their motivation but I am fundamentally opposed to that because that's illegal. I mean, that's copyright infringement. Somebody did work very hard to create that book and put a lot of effort into it. And you just took away their opportunity to make any returns from, from doing that. And I don't, I, I think that's wrong. Illegal, yes. Ethical, uh, it's, uh, I, it's hard to say. Um, is should the distribution of knowledge be this expensive? Um, there's a lot of arguments for, you know, knowledge should be free because, you know, uh, consumption of it by one person doesn't, you know, restrict it to anybody else. Um, however, I, I do understand the, the work that goes into the books from the authors and everything. Um, but, you know, I've seen the, the prices on these books go up every year, and there's no justifying charging that much for a book. Um, if you really do want students to read it and learn from it, so. I would say it's very difficult in my class to take much away if you didn't have the textbook. I, but, I, but I'm one of those persons that say, hey, yeah, you're paying for this. I want to make sure that if I'm making you buy this, it's going to be worth it to you. No, it's just I, it is a pain. They're required, and it's a pain that you have to buy them no matter what. And just for teachers, they should have a little bit of sympathy for the students that can't really afford all the books. Again, I just I give them a lot of choices, and I think I'm pretty good about that because I do think it's outrageous how expensive they've gotten. But I can also I also know why, and I think in many cases it's very legitimate expenses that are driving the costs up. But some teachers will give you the option. They'll call me and, you know, how much are you charging for this book? How much could you get it for this one? We know the on-campus is charging X, Y, Z. What will you charge? And um, I've got a lot of professors um, even been open a year here. I've got a lot of professors who only do business with me. I think over the last four years, professors have become way more understanding of students, and they're trying to help. And I know that each semester there's one more, one more professor that says, you I understand how expensive books are and then they'll follow it up with so I'm going to not require the textbook or I have put it on reserve at the library and such. The NMSU bookstore is now operated by Barnes & Noble. 
Right now, construction has begun on a 46,000 square foot building that will remove over 200 parking spaces in a student lot. This $14 million structure will soon read Barnes & Noble. I personally don't like it because of the fact that all it ever does is take money away from students. Books are high enough and Barnes & Nobles is really expensive, you know, and I think it's a waste of time that they're building an even bigger Barnes & Nobles and taking away from the parking is what we so desperately need. I don't like it. I mean, the only reason I bought my book from Barnes & Noble was because our campus ran out of the books that we were supposed to have, so I had to go somewhere. But, I mean, I think that it should be a school-based thing, like bookstores should be for the school, not a big corporation that's getting money somewhere else. Barnes & Noble's is a business, and to me it's funny how nowadays these businesses are on school and they, they don't look at it as this is an education thing, but more as like a making money type deal. You know, the prices of books, it, they're not going down. It's, it's not a problem that's getting solved. And I definitely feel as students, like, like I said, we're a population that's being more taken advantage of rather than like listened to. I took my questions to the manager at the Barnes & Noble on campus said they'd be happy to help me out however they could. When I returned to the store to schedule an interview, I was informed that the manager who had been working with me was no longer with the company. I was then introduced to the replacement manager who explained she'd be willing to give me an interview. After sending her the questions for approval, this is what I was told. Since you submitted that list of questions, I've been told that I can't answer any of the questions on your list. They want you to work with Karen at corporate. So my hands are kind of tied. If they said I can't do it, then I, I, I can't. I contacted Karen at corporate and was told that she could not answer any of my questions. However, somebody from another department would be contacting me soon. The only recording I could get from Barnes & Noble was this. Hi Karen, this is Michael Vega from New Mexico State University. I spoke with the manager of the bookstore here today and she gave me your phone number to contact you regarding a documentary that I'm working on, a student project here, and she said that you can answer.